Good morning everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good because it is good to feel good. And I know what you're probably thinking right now. Morning? It's still dark outside, Ollie. What are you talking about? Well, technically it's about 7.30 in the morning right now. And I'm on my way to a meeting point for today's tour. And just for a bit of context, it doesn't get light until about 9, 10 a.m. here at this time of year in Iceland. So at least we've got a few hours of darkness to enjoy. <laughs> Um, even though it looks like it is the middle of the night where I'm walking right now. But anyway, we have got a very fun day ahead, doing the Golden Circle tour, going to the Secret Lagoon, I've got my swimming gear and GoPro with me. Uh, we're going to see some geezers, a few top geezers, I should imagine. Um, but I'm imagining today should be a very fun day indeed. So, anyway, I'm on my way to the meeting point now. And, um, yeah, let's enjoy today's tour. Should be a good one. just made a little stop for supplies and whatnot and also it is starting to get a bit light I mean the Sun will have risen in about an hour's time or so but we're going to this exhibit where I'm just gonna say this about context there's a really nice crack about um, and obviously because of Iceland being um, between two tectonic plates between the North American plate and the Eurasian plate there's obviously a lot of tectonic activity that happens in Iceland, a lot of volcanic activity for that matter and the guide was just saying because of that there's a really nice crack where we're just about to go. <laughs> so here we are, so this is literally between two tectonic plates, we're on the North American plate and now on the Eurasian plate. <laughs> first major stops of today. This is the Kedid Crater. Um, so this was once like an active volcano from what we were being told and um, yeah the lake down there now is just completely frozen over. Whew. Also be very careful we don't want to slip down anything or anything so I'm going to take my steps carefully. I tell you what's also really cool being in this part of Iceland is just like these vast open landscapes that you're seeing. Um, our guide was saying how it's very unlikely like in the center of Iceland because one of its landscape and also because of volcanic activity that it's unlikely to like be able to like inhabit any of those areas so hence why most of the population in Iceland are either on the coast all the vast majority of people live in Reykjavik. So um, there's some more information me expositing for you guys. So even though you've got like a viewing platform here, apparently going down there is another viewing platform. So I'm gonna be very careful where I step and make my way down there too. Right, we're at the bottom of the lake now and it seems a bit risky going on the ice, but here goes nothing. <sighs> okay, we've just made it to the secret lagoon and essentially we've got an hour and a half here to just like, you know, sit back and relax. Got my swim gear here, of course. I've got to swap over cameras in a second as well. Cause I'm like, I don't want to take this camera in the water with me. Hence why I've got my GoPro and my waterproof um, case for my phone as well. But um, interesting thing about this, even though it's called the secret lagoon, it's not so secret cause it's a tourist attraction, but essentially the Icelandic translation translates as the old pool and it is the oldest natural swimming pool in Iceland, which is really cool. We've just made it outside. Oh, that's freezing. But I bet it's gonna be lovely when we get in there. Hold on, let's give us a test, shall we? Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, oh, that's lovely. Oh, brilliant. and relax. Oh, this is wonderful. Because of there being volcanic activity around the Blue Lagoon, in fact, I noticed it when I was flying in to Iceland yesterday. I think that area's 
temporarily out of bounds. So if you want to find a different lagoon, definitely recommend here at the Secret Lagoon. You know, if you need just a little bit of relaxation, I definitely would recommend this. This is just mm, beautiful, relaxing, and very cutesy. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've just finished up at the Secret Lagoon. Honestly, that was such a fun experience. Like, you know, compared to all the colds that I'm gonna endure here in Iceland, it was nice to get a bit of warmth at the same time. So definitely would recommend, if you're not going to the Blue Lagoon, and obvious reasons you can't really do that at the moment because it's out of bounds because of the volcanic activity, definitely make your way over to the Secret Lagoon. So we're currently at the Golfos Waterfalls and um, it's lovely. As um, TLC once said, um, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I don't know why I put these little references like left, right and centre, but you know, it's there for the content. Look at these falls though. So it starts up there and then it's like this massive canyon down here. Incredible. Oh look, if you can focus, you can see a rainbow. That's really cool. So I've just made it up the stairs. I have so from up here, you've got a really good vantage point as well, but I'm just paying attention to what I can see in the distance here. So look at all this lovely landscape. And especially in the distance, you can see a glacier as well. Whew. Hope they do good water there. <laughs> but, um, no, I tell you what, I've only been here a short while in Iceland, but there's a lot of like incredible landscapes that I'm seeing and it's like making for some really good first impressions. Wow. Okay, we've just made another stop on this tour. Um, we've now stopped by some gazers and um, the guide was just saying how um, these gazers are very unpredictable, like i.e. when they erupt. So they said like how, you know how you've got Old Faithful at Yellowstone National Park in America? That can take like a few hours to see it like erupt or anything like that, but these ones erupt like say like every five to seven minutes. So there's a good chance we'll get to see an eruption on camera. So at any moment, one of these gazers could erupt. So you gotta expect, no, what was it, what's my saying? Be prepared for the unexpected. I guess you could say this one up here is the top gaze. <laughs> Terrible joke, I know, but um, you know, I'd love it if like, if I'm just standing here for like a good five minutes or so and it doesn't appear. Let's find out. I don't know to say like it's very unpredictable when a gazer erupts, but um, like I've been standing here for a good 10 minutes or so and I've not seen one erupt yet, so. Could be a matter of time. Could be as I'm recording this. You never know. Oh, almost missed that. <laughs> oh, I would not want to be here standing right there. <laughs> I love that. You could literally just be standing around for minutes and then it just like unpredictably happens. So <laughs> the fact that I wasn't recording as it went off and I was like, quick, quick, quick. And, um, but thankfully we managed to um, catch a shot of the gazer erupting. Although this one's looking a bit feisty down there as well. <laughs> On all my travels, especially to Iceland, I never thought I'd find a Costa coffee. <laughs> 
Whoa. Well, we got. I went back for the sake of it. We got two eruptions in one space of a few seconds. That's very lovely. Although I'm just keeping it on in case it does happen again in the background. <laughs> Okay, we're at our final little stop of the day. We are in Thingvela National Park, and um, it's got quite a unique bit to it in Iceland in the sense that it's like there's an area that we were just passing through on the coach called No Man's Land. But we're at the point now where we're just like, we've got our last little few hours here before we head back to Reykjavik. And I'm gonna take in the views, and also the sun's nearly just about set, but we've still got a tingy bit of daylight to take advantage of. Okay, so one thing I have just noticed is there is a nice little pink accent you can see in the sky right now. And that's obviously off the backdrop of the sunset and the bit over there. But I tell you what it does remind me of is it reminds me so much of when I was in Tromsø in Norway. And even though technically Iceland's not in the Arctic Circle, like especially during the winter months, you get a really nice, cool pink accent vibe um, in the sky. <laughs> and off the backdrop of the mountains as well, it looks really beautiful. And then you see here on the other side, there's this little patch of evergreen forest. Mm -hmm. Right above us, there's this black line there going through the landscape. Oh, yeah. That's the beginning of the Eurasian tectonic plate. So remember when I told you this morning that we can't quite stand on both plates at the same time? You would have to be a big troll. <laughs> it makes sense now, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so the lake that we see down here again, this is the lake Singwatnava. It's Iceland's biggest lake. And this cool cloud over there, that's the volcano cloud. Okay, we're just walking through. <laughs> Feels like I'm walking through some kind of like that, like you know, giant's valley or something, which is quite fitting for me because I am technically a giant, being free and all that. <laughs> but it, <laughs> anyway, okay, so we're just doing a little walk down this where we are. But essentially, where I'm walking here, and as you can see, all the rock formations there. This is the edge of the North American tectonic plate. So I don't know if you can see like a ridge in the distance but that is the edge of the Eurasian plate and essentially this whole area leading up to here is essentially a kind of like a no man's land for tectonic activity even though we've already established that the two plates are separating at a rate of two centimeters a year in the no man's land area it's all quite unpredictable so you never know anything could happen walking over the edge just about to walk into no man's land. <laughs> I know I said this a few years ago when I was in Norway, but it's like being in Skyrim it is, and I've only just found my PS4 again and started playing Skyrim all over again. And, um, but like anywhere in like Scandinavia, you're just gonna get all those like Skyrim-like vibes. So um, definitely hearing like all the music from the game, I imagine there's probably a dragon or something flying above me right now, but yeah, hopefully the dragonborn's about to protect us. I guess there's a reason why the cones are there, because it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be coming along this way. Oh, crap. Get back, yeah, get back on the, get back on the snow. Okay, we made it back up for a long, long walk and then more or less catching the end of the sunset. That's beautiful. Okay, we've made it back on the coach. We've finished off here at Thing Valor and now we're gonna head back to Reykjavik. I feel so tired, but do you know what? It's been a really lovely day. All right, so we've made it back to Reykjavik. This is Alsa, she has been our guide today. She's been absolutely incredible, giving us a lot of local knowledge, you're welcome, local knowledge, a like history of Iceland, everything. If you're on a tour with her, she's the one. She's been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. That's all right, have a lovely evening and you take too. care. Bye-bye. 
Okay, I've made it back into Reykjavik, so um, now walking about and oh my god, <laughs> there's a Grinch in there. I'd love that if that's just somebody in costume and like just standing there just to freak people out. Um, I'd say what's interesting though is it, it like this feels like the exact same like level of darkness. I was walking through Reykjavik in the early hours of this morning and you could easily insert like some footage from earlier this morning and you couldn't tell the difference. All right, so I've just made it to a little bay area, not too far from my hostel, and I tell you what I have been doing. I don't be thinking, Ollie, what are you doing by, by a bay at this time of night? And basically, I've been trying to catch a few little glimpses of the Northern Lights. Um, I managed to catch a few little shots, so I'll just put a few of them in here. But this is ahead of me going on my official Northern Lights tour tomorrow night, where I think we'll be going towards like more isolated to part of Iceland and then also just, you know, getting a bit of like extra vantage points from there. I think I think it's gonna be a fun one tomorrow night nonetheless. But also at the same time, you know, I thought to myself, oh, actually, now that I think about it, I can see a nice little bit. You can't obviously see it, but there's a really nice bit just sticking out in this direction here. Uh, in fact, let me just try and see if I can get it on my phone one sec. Oh, yep, yep, yeah. Hold on, let me just get a nice little shot of that. So, I know I have to kind of make do with what I've got, but that's a really nice shot that is, and at least we've got some aurora activity. So anyway, as I was mentioning, the reason why I was out here is because there was just that little glimpse of the aurora, I thought I might get a chance. Sure enough, I did. And the reason why I was out here is one, because it's, um, it's a nice clear night, and two, looking out this way, like into the distance, into the bay, there's no light pollution, which is always your best bet. And um, I've also been trying to adjust my setting for this camera. I'm not quite been able to do it justice on this camera, but I'm gonna try my best for it tomorrow night, so fingers crossed to that. Okay, so I'm back at the hostel now. I'm gonna end the vlog here just because there's people in the room. I don't want to disturb them, but you know what? It's been an absolutely incredible day nonetheless, you know, from, you know, going to the Gerrit Crater, the Secret Lagoon. Um, what else do we do? At the Goldfoss um, waterfall, uh, the geyser that we saw, and as well as, you know, ending off that little part in the Golden Circle at the Thingadella National Park. All of it absolutely incredible. And, you know, shout out again to Ashta, who was an incredible guide for today. And, you know, as I was, had her on vlog earlier, she was really lovely and, you know, she really knew her stuff and, you know, knew a lot about, like, you know, it's like Icelandic history, about current affairs and, like, you know, traditions and all sorts. Just very, got all that knowledge. And I always say, well, everyone always says knowledge is power. But then also, in that little glimpse as well, at the end of tonight, I've managed to catch a little glimpse of the Northern Lights, hopefully. Fingers crossed that's a precursor for tomorrow night. But anyway, I'm gonna finish off the vlog here. I am very tired, I need some sleep, but thankfully I don't have a, um, a lot going on tomorrow morning. So thankfully I have an activity in the afternoon. I'm going on a whale safari, so I'm getting a, um, um, a what's it called, Bo a boat out, and we're gonna go out and find some whales, see where they're swimming and whatnot. That should be a very fun experience as well. But anyway, I'm going to sign off here. My battery's flashing red, so I do need to charge it. I'll sign off here, and I'll leave you with some advice. As always, to enjoy yourself, stay safe, and make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. Thank you for watching, and peace.